Okay, so we're going to begin this activity with looking at earthquakes that have happened in Google Earth. And although you can download it through various uh, play stores, you don't have to. You can launch it right here inside of Chrome and it'll open up and, and give you everything you need to do. Depending on your server or your uh, computer, it might take a little bit longer. So I'm going to pause for the moment and uh, click over to another website where we need to get started. Okay, so where you're going to start here is the USGS website. Now you can also just go to uh, Google Earth, just Google in general and say earthquakes today as I did here actually last night. And it usually gives the one um, that was most recent in this big picture, but you can see these are all going to USGS.gov. And here's some other earthquakes that have happened in the most recent time. If you're interested in looking at any of these, uh, feel free to do so. So this is one way to find your earthquake of the day. And as you can see, this gives you a lot of the information right there. But I want to start here at our earthquakes hazard program because ultimately that's where all those links will take you. And there's a couple of places I want you to go to. Um, here's something for the latest earthquakes, but ultimately we're also going to be hitting the data and products. So just in the past 30 days, here's some significant earthquakes. So here's one location of finding earthquakes. Looks like we had one that was a 6.4 recently. So let me go over here to latest earthquakes and see. So these of course are showing us near the US and you can certainly zoom to any of these locations you want to if you wanted to zoom to the world and see where all of those earthquakes that might have been that happened. Um, so let's see, here's one right here that happened, it looks like near New Zealand. These uh, values right here are an indication of the intensity level, uh, which is mostly where the instrument's coming from. And you can see that it's related to the shake map. We'll look at that in a second. So it looks like the one we, we clicked on was in Tonga. So I'm going to click there. And it should take me to the data. All right, so let's just go ahead and highlight. Tonga, control C, and I'm going to go to my Google Earth, and I'm going to click in right here, the search engine, and control V, and hit go. Let's try to find just this part then. Here we go. So we go over here to the other side. Looks like we're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. All right, and just by simply pulling out a little bit here, we can look at the seafloor around there and see what it looks like. It should take a minute for Google Earth to sort of bring that into play. There we go. So it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot of boundaries here, only I do see what looks to be some remnants of the uh, old hurricane, old uh, volcanoes underneath. So they had a whole bunch of volcanoes here. Looks like if we follow those dots along the way here, these little islands, and we see, hmm, that looks pretty deep to me. We can put our finger or mouse over here. And when you put your mouse here, you'll notice here in the bottom corner, it talks about how deep things are. So right about there, it says we're at, what, 8,400 meters deep. It looks to me like that would be a trench. That's ocean on that side and ocean on that side. So that will be our convergent boundary. And uh, right off of New Zealand. So this is the place you'll look to find out hurricanes, uh, earthquakes that you're interested in. So another option that I'd like for you to do is when you click here on the left-hand corner, you come down, it'll say My Places. Now, as you notice, it says here you can add KML or KMZ files, but in order to do that, you have to come down and turn your settings on in order to load a KML file or a KMZ. So by clicking on settings and dragging down to the bottom it tells you that you can turn on a KML file import. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now that's going to allow me to import a KML file. And I actually downloaded one earlier. 
so I will bring that one up now. I got the, in the last week, any of the earthquakes that were a 1.0 magnitude. Now we have hundreds of thousands happening on a yearly basis. We have that chart in the videos that I sent you, the video PDF files. So we have lots of different uh, 1.0 magnitudes here. We can spin around with our globe and look at here in the Dominican Republic. It looks like they have a whole lot going on in San Juan and the DR. We come over here to Africa and we start seeing some more of these 1.0s. So this is a file that you can bring in and uh, take a look at that to have a conversation about. So where did I get those? Well, let's go back here to the USGS. I'm going to go back and back and back and back and back and back. All right, so we're going to go over here to data and products. When you go to the data and products, I want you to do a couple things here. I want you to look at what, in fact, are seismic waveforms. Now, we talked about seismicity and you know what those look at look like and you can get a display worldwide of these different seismograms. Um, I chose this one up here at Weston and by choosing the one here at Weston I was able to bring up uh, one of these seismograms and these are red from top to bottom just like you would imagine and so this is this one down here is the most recent and so they, just like reading a textbook, this would have happened, you know, within the last couple of days. And uh, so this is the most recent happening right now. But I want to come over here and look at earthquakes globally and significant earthquakes. And here's the one where I went to to look at Haiti. Back in uh, 2010, Haiti had a 7.0 magnitude. Let's see, earthquake maps gives you an idea of the magnitude. But at this West, Weston website, I went to the actual Weston Observatory. And from this Weston Observatory, I found a couple of very interesting things about what their actual seismometers look like inside the buildings here. This is the receipt from the information that would be buried down in the ground. So the recording device uh, up here. So you can see there's actually a lot from 1975 to 2017. The New England coast actually gets a whole lot of earthquakes one wouldn't imagine. All right, so watching the earthquake shows you how they actually do their different, um, here's St. Petersburg, Florida. We can see an earthquake happening there. And so on this chart right here, you would actually look at these and say, oh, Oakland, Virginia probably got it first, but what you have to remember is you cannot tell unless you absolutely know across the bottom here what time a P wave arrived. It is actually the lag time between P and S that lets you know how close to an epicenter and who would have received it first. There's a picture of that in your textbook, so don't miss that question on the exam. But I want you to look through here, this west for the New England coast, Again, you can see all the different S&P waves. You scroll down here, and this was actually a really good article about seismograms and their 24-hour record. But they also show that why are these things, as you look across here, why is there vibrations way before any uh, 1.0 or higher magnitudes show up? And as it tells you, you know, they have to put these where they're not in, near any highways or roads because that's going to make the earth vibrate as well. But I really like that it talked about the natural phenomenon coming through. And they have a picture when Hurricane Sandy came through and what that looked like on the seismogram. So I want you to take a look at that and, uh, and notice October 28th. If you blow this up, you can see the information they're talking about. And this is a whole, ironically, an earthquake went on on top of Hurricane Sandy. So this was actually... Remember, this is later in time here. You would read this from the top to the bottom. So this is later in time than this one. So they had a 7.7 .7 earthquake, had an aftershock of a 6.3, and then all this noise as Hurricane Sandy comes through until back to 
where you can see it's going back to normal. Okay, and by normal, of course, we mean just those basic little vibrating lines. Here's an example of those earth doing little tiny things going on in South Carolina. And again, no major earthquakes here, maybe a little bit of S&P activity here. So there's all kinds of places you can look at. The earth is being watched at all times to see where the seismicity is happening. And that's, of course, how we learned about the layers of the earth that you tested on for last time. That USGS uh, historical events, the one of 2010 in Haiti, here's a bunch of very good information about that event if you're interested. You know, and talks about the um, intraspecific uh, lateral slip lines that happened. So that's uh, an example of how those transform boundaries that we're talking about really are those crossbars all along your convergent and divergent boundaries. Uh, they don't really exist, these transform faults, separate of the divergence and convergence. It's kind of like growing pains. The entire plate boundary of convergent and divergent, they're not spreading or, or uh, coming together at the same time. And so all along in a T format, you're going to have these uh, slip strikes and these fault lines. So just a reminder here, this is an example of all the shallow earthquakes that came from uh, 76 to 2005. And again, it's just like the pictures in your textbook. Uh, these earthquake boundaries is exactly what Harry Hess used in order to realize that something's going on. We have these plates that are moving and shifting. So the idea that uh, the earth is growing at these divergent boundaries, you can see those right here. There's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here's the East Pacific Rise, the East African uh, Rift right here, and all these others, the Earth cannot get larger, and so therefore it must be shrinking somewhere, and where it's shrinking is where it's being recycled at all these convergent boundaries. And Harry Hess was in the position by the 1960s as this information was coming out with what we know about uh, the magnetic fields and the age of the ocean floor and all the information that you've read about. Okay, so I want to go back here to the USGS where you can pull up your own KML file. And we come back here and we go back to this data and products. And we see down here you can click on real-time earthquakes. And when you click on real-time earthquakes, there has a place called the shake map. And from the shake map, you can see, you know, all the ones that happened. So, for example, we had one last night in Iran. Had a magnitude of 5.4. Anything that's about, um, about was it about four? Three, from three to four is when humans begin to start feeling it. So you can go here, you can uh, click on this information for Iran, and it brings you an interactive map. Did you feel it kind of conversation? Uh, you can also look at any nearby seismicity if you're interested. But if you notice back on this one page here, go back past the shake map, one more. And just down here under products, Google Earth KML files. And you can click on these real-time earthquakes. And you can get it by age, by depth. You can get it animated if you want to. So I wanted to do, I did the one before with 1.0. So now I want to do those in the past 30 days that have a 2.5 or greater. And I'm going to do it by the depth. As you can see, the file loads down here in the bottom. So now when I go to my Google Earth, and I discard that KML file, and I import a new one, I'm importing this 2.5 one. So we always go back to the United States, because this is the USGS website. But all you have to do is spin around anywhere that you're interested. So of course there's our Alaska. I'm kind of prone to this amazing little thing here. Hmm. Again, that shows me that way down here, that we're at 8,000 meters depth. And uh, I believe that's the Mariana Trench. So let's see, this one looks pretty good. Let's do this guy. So here's one that happened in the North Mariana Islands, 
So as you can see, Google Earth provides a really amazing way to look at the structures of the ocean. Uh, this is an amazing tool for the internet and you can go anywhere in the globe you want and find out how deep you are and uh, have fun with it. Okay, so once you play around with this for a while, I'd imagine you spend, you know, anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour or so. Um, depends on how excited you are, and I know you're all uh, jammed for time. Then I want you to go to the Flipgrid, and your weekly video discussion board is to talk about the hurricane, uh, earthquake that you found. I keep saying hurricane. Let's spin that hurricane, Sandy. Okay, so talk about this with other people, have a discussion, and um, looking for two replies each afterwards. The details are provided on the Flipgrid. I do hope that you guys get your uh, first video upload by Thursday. If we keep waiting to the end of the week, it makes it hard for the rest of us to contribute. So let's have your initial upload by Thursday and get the uh, answers by Sunday. Thanks.